Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso here on SABC3. We are continuing with our health discussion this morning with uh, infectious diseases specialist Dr. Emil Reed, who's here and ready to answer all of your questions on the new Johnson & Johnson coronavirus vaccine. Thank you once again to everyone who has sent through their questions, whether on our social media platforms or have called in to the show right now. Well, uh, Dr. Reed, the, this conversation certainly was going to be one that sparks mm. and sort of reels in lots of interest. We've got Rose on the line uh, out in East London. Rose in East London, good morning. Good morning. Morning, Dr. Reed. Morning, Rose. What is your question for the good doctor, Rose? Once you've had the vaccine, are you immune immediately? Mm. Rose, that is a fantastic question. And, and the answer is unfortunately not. Okay. And I think people need to remember that this vaccine is not something that makes you immune to contracting COVID immediately. Mm. Okay. And, and the sole purpose of this vaccine is to protect us against complication, serious illness due to COVID infection, mm. hospitalization mm. and deaths. And, 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 and this is not a perfect vaccination by any chance. Mm. And, and should we get the jab, it probably takes at 28 days or a month mm. to be 85% protective against serious COVID infections yeah. and round about 49 days before you are 100% safe of developing symptomatic complicated COVID-19 or need to be hospitalized. Yeah. So, so even if you did get the jab, yeah. you still need to adhere to mitigation strategies. Mm. You still need to wear your mask, keep physical distance and sanitize because you can contract the virus. Mm. Thank you very much, Rose, for that. That was yes. a very good question. Very so good question. The vaccine question. is not a cure. It doesn't make you immune. It does Immediate. do it. protects uh, you from all of those really serious complications. We've got another caller. Yes, we do. We have... Um, on that note, actually, we're going to... We don't have gonna, the caller now. We don't now. have the caller right now, but we'll get her a little later on. On that not, note, doctor, how many phases do you need to go through with the vaccine? How many doses does one need? Well, the amazing one with the Johnson & Johnson jab, you only need one dosage. Mm. And, and, and unlike the mRNA vaccines, the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, where you need two dosages, mm. and also with the AstraZeneca, you need two dosages, which is either three weeks or 12 weeks apart mm. in order to give you maximum protection. Mm. And, and, I, and the one point we probably need to stress as well is that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is the only vaccine that got tested with the development of the new variant in South Africa. That's that good news. A 501Y V2 variant, um, and it was shown to be protective mm. against the variant mm. as well. None of the other vaccines were tested during the development of the variant, mm. making the, the Johnson & Johnson jab currently the best vaccine for South Africa. Which is great. Well, we've got our caller on the line. It's Avril out in Durban. Avril, good morning. What is your question for the good doctor? Good morning. I have two questions, actually. Um, the first one is, if I get a flu injection, a flu vaccine, I get flu. If I don't have one, I don't normally get one. Will that be giving myself um, COVID-19? Uh, Avril, that is a very good question. And the answer to that is no, because this is not a live uh, virus. Okay. This is an inactivated virus. Mm. Um, DNA mm. that is given with a vector adenovirus mm. uh, 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 um, jab that cannot cause infections in human, meaning that you will not contract uh, COVID-19. Okay. And should you have the subtle symptoms of headache, muscle aches, mm. etc., mm. it's considered to be normal for a post-vaccination um, 
uh, 24 to 48 it's hours. To be expected. Yeah. That's well, Avril, certainly sounds like you're here for a consultation. You're in for it. <laughs> what is your second question for Dr. Reed? Okay, thank you very much, Doctor. Um, the other question is, how do we know if we're asymptomatic? For instance, if we have flu, we can't go and get a flu injection. So how do we know without testing first if we have the virus or does it not matter at all whether we've got the virus or not or mm. carrying the virus? That is also a fantastic uh, question, Avril. Mm. And, and the, the, the current guidelines is if you are asymptomatic, you are fine to actually have the jab. Mm. If you are currently have been diagnosed with a COVID-19 infection and also proven to test positive for the virus while you still have symptoms, mm. you need to wait around about two to four weeks after the symptoms subside before you can get your jab. Mm. Yeah. I hope that answers your question. Now we're moving to Johannesburg, the city of gold, with Neil. Good morning, Neil. Hi, uh, morning. Uh, sorry, just correction. The name is Emil, same as the doctor. Oh, oh no. Wow. Hi. Morning, Emil. Morning, <laughs> okay. well, what's morning, your question for the doctor? Um, yes, uh, actually, it's sort of two things. Um, I'm not too clued up on it, but what I want to find out is this, this vaccine, it, it, it should never be perceived as a, a, as a cure or any vaccine um, as such. It, it, am I correct in saying it shouldn't be that I get the vaccine and boom, I'm cured? Mm -hmm. And then just the other thing I want to ask, if I've got something like, uh, for example, a post-nasal drip, right, um, like, and a sore throat, can I take the vaccine or do I need to wait for that um, post-nasal drip or, or to, to clear up? Okay, Emil, that is, that is a fantastic question. Yeah. And as we said with the previous caller, this is not a curative vaccine. Mm -hmm. and, and after the vaccine, you need to continue with the mitigation strategies. Mm -hmm. and, and also, I mean, it only protects us against the severe symptoms, hospitalization and, and death due to COVID-19 infection. Mm -hmm. um, pertaining to the second question, um, if you have a post-nasal drip, that is usually part of a chronic allergic condition, which, which happens on a yearly basis or whether it's seasonal, whether it's yearly. Mm. Um, and, and that is no contraindication for receiving the jab. So Emil, you, you will be safe if you uh, accept the offer for getting this jab, even if you have a, a post-nasal drip. Oh, thank you so much for that, Emil. Hopefully that answers your questions. Let's go to Soweto. Let's yes. go to Soweto and to fire. Let's talk to Pinky in Soweto. Pinky, good morning. Pinky! Good morning, Pinky. Uh, seems we're having a bit of a challenge mm. with uh, getting through to Pinky there. And it's very, very important to mention, right, because I think that the biggest misconception really that people do have mm. is that the vaccine, A, is either going to cause a lot of complications mm -hmm. for them, it's going to bring about a lot of the COVID-19 symptoms first and really throw them off, or two, it's going to cure them in mm -hmm. the event that they do have mm. uh, some COVID-19 symptoms. What is your key takeout and the, really the one thing that you want to leave everybody with uh, as far as the COVID-19 vaccine is concerned? I think the important thing for people to, to understand that the reason why this vaccine have been developed is because of, of everybody all around the work, world working together. Mm. And, and, and the perfect vaccine would be a curative vaccine, a vaccine that will eradicate, that will block you from being infected with COVID mm. and will block you from transmitting the virus. Okay. This virus, uh, this vaccine is not the perfect vaccine yet. And we will probably in the next four or five years ah. get to a, the perfect vaccine. But our, our biggest burden of, of disease was with complications, serious infections, hospitalization, overwhelming our facilities. Mm. And that is where this vaccine is extremely important. Mm. It will protect our healthcare facilities mm. and should not be viewed as a cure. Yeah, but a very important question that I'm pretty sure everyone is asking right now, 
How much is it to get the vaccine, mm. doctor? You, you, you mean how much Does money? It cost? Yes, yes it, it, it is. Because currently the vaccine is available freely yeah. and free of charge to healthcare professionals. Yeah. And, 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 and the, the medical aids have, have also been part of this discussion. So, so they will cover it in full as mm. well. But, but for now, the, the vaccine will be free of charge. Mm. Well, certainly you have to be a member of the HPCSA at the moment in order at to be moment. able to qualify to get that vaccine. And really, we are wishing all of our frontline workers, and that's specifically mm. speaking to our healthcare workers who are going to be getting vaccinated, and that's continuing to roll out as we speak. Uh, all of the best um, with all of this. And we really do take off our hats to everybody that's been um, involved um, in the process of bringing this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, you know, vaccine together. Mm -hmm. But of course, for everybody out uh, at home right now, you know, we have to reinforce that uh, we're not out uh, of the dark yet. You've still got to continue adhering to all of those regulations. Wash your hands, sanitize, socially distance, wear a mask. It's very, very important. But Dr. Emil, thank you so much for joining us with that lovely update on COVID-19. Always a pleasure. We'll Thank see you, you after this.